Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Total War Warhammer 3 Immortal Empires where today we are deep in the Thunderdome with this dwarf faction and then after we managed to take this stuff away from them, I don't know where, like, what was it, like eight settlements? They have some crazy number of settlements that we just have no idea where the rest of them are. Yeah, eight. Um, I guess once we take this stuff away, when we click on their, their name here in the thing, it'll zoom us to the part of the world where they are approximately. But it's got to be the case that what happened is they confederated some distant dwarf faction somewhere. And so they'll have a bunch of settlements like down here in these mountains or something. <sighs> Eliminating them is going to be a whole fucking nightmare of a situation. All right. One problem at a time. Who's healthy? Uh, Urkathal's looking like like someone who can be in the lead. Urkathal is missing a unit. Uh, I mean, what do we... We can just grab a unit of trolls. All right, we have a couple of giants already. Yeah, let's... Okay, first of all, let me, let me make sure I'm actually warbanding my units correctly. First of all... Let's mark these friends. Um, so the big difference between these units is the Chaos Knights of Cinch sacrifice a fair amount of melee defense for uh, the for the extra charge bonus. Is that hmm? And a, a little tiny bit of melee attack as well. Is that actually just better? Well, the ones with the the ones with the lances don't upgrade into Doom Knights, though. That's gonna make that decision real easy. Against these dwarves, I think we are gonna swap over to Halberds, maybe. The loss of the melee attack does matter. Great weapons also give you considerable armor piercing, and they don't involve losing the attack. Although you lose a ton of defense by going that way. Yeah, slightly higher damage, and then we can't see the, um, we can't actually see the difference in the balance of the weapon damage, but yeah, a lot more of it is going to be armor piercing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to great weapons for our chaos warriors here for this situation. Uh, what do y'all need to upgrade? You need to be, oh, you're high enough. Okay. All right. Feeling pretty good about that then. So this is where things get really dangerous, right? They have enough dwarves here that it might not be advisable for us to just run up and... It's like, I want to burn this settlement and then have the other two armies lie in wait. And if we were able to uh, trick them into an ambush, it would be pretty great. If, if not... Then we're probably looking at three full stacks of troops versus three full stacks of troops, except that my troops are kind of torn up already, um, which I am very concerned about. We're not in like terrible shape, I guess. I am also just like looking things over and making sure that everybody's been uh, war banded appropriately. Let us corrupt. Yeah. All right. I could potentially try to wound a hero out of one of these armies to make my make my life a little bit easier. Kill. Oh, we already used up all your movement this turn. Okay, well never mind. Let me cancel that order. I foresee destruction. Yeah, alright, let's just do it. I'm going to send up the army that is in second best shape just to really minimize casualties here from the auto resolver. And then we are going to, yeah, that, <laughs> that really worked. Uh, we are going to raise it and as such fall back, except nope, this time we don't fall back. 
whether or not you whether or not you automatically fall back, completely random as far as I can tell, as is the distance. Okay, uh, piercing bolts of burning is like extremely whatever. Let's start red line stuff. Yeah. Now they will see true power. I'll find a spot that I can move to where I'm retaining enough movement to be in ambush mode. Very well, I'll move. It's, I guess, as good as we're going to get. Chaos is all. If you get in front, will you be able to... Yeah, we can... We can get Talson's army in front in a position where I can I can lay a more effective ambush. Stay on sea, <laughs> If either one of these armies maintains the ambush stance, it'll be pretty significant. We will potentially be able to take down one of their armies, breaking our ambush, and then have a 2v3 uh, for the for the battle beyond that, which would be a pretty good position to be in. And the time has come to claim Karak Hearn, yeah? Yeah, I think so. So is this, this dwarf faction, are these two settlements their whole deal? Yes. Okay, we can totally wipe them out. Great. Great, great, great news. Can you reach that this turn? No, not quite. Favor to be had. And there is favor to be had, of course, and Tiro's making a great point. Uh, I'm not too worried about these badly damaged armies... Throny Azrael is a full-size stack, but it's a full-size stack of, like, very dubious construction. And also, a lot of the troops are really low level. I don't think we need to fall back to defend Nuln. I think we're, we're fine. Eternal blasphemy. So let's do the standard ambush creep here. Hmm. Actually, should one of you turn around? It's possible... Oh, no, no, never mind. We go together. Damn. Right, there are big dwarf armies right on the other side of the mountain range, and they can pass underneath the mountains with their with their dwarf nonsense. Their cheaty That's movement so modes. Here we stay. So for clarity, with the northern provinces gone, my uh my large campaign victory is just yeah, it's just these three factions right here, sort of uh, the group of the Wood Elves and the Empire, and then Kareza Karak, which is turning out to be perhaps even more of a problem than I, than I thought it was going to be. Okay, Malefex has leveled up due to clever ambush work. That's me, just me complimenting my own skill at the video game. The gods. Um, yeah, maybe maybe spend a minute inside the settlement. Just try to recover for her for a bit there. Now is chaos. Right. I see no reason to approach stealthily here. We are showing up in force. Trelon gets to know what's happening. So Malefex is good. My beauty. Sigvald is in position to catch these dark elves, although I think they're probably going to get to run. Yeah, and we're not going to be able to follow. The dark prince wishes. Forward unto slaughter. Not enough to kill them anyway. Valkyr the bloody. However, Valkyr the bloody is right here. Oh. Oh, the Camry screwed up. They did not get onto land evenly. Uh, yeah, so we get to blitz this this unit or this army while the other one is still disembarking. Well, I think we'd be fools not to take advantage. Hold on, though. Consort of corn. Armor up those chaos trolls. Uh, I think we are going to go ahead and make these uh, dual weapon troops. Okay. Rank 7 allows them to become chosen of corn with dual weapons, which is probably a thing that I was missing before 
due to that uh, DLC uh, mistake that I made. It's just a tiny, tiny error. Uh, definitely bonus damage on y'all. Missile resistance and stuff. Hmm. One of the troll units, maybe? I know, well, they're armored now. Whatever, it's fine. Uh, anyway, this army is almost, enti <laughs> almost entirely just, like, pretty bad archers. So we overrun them trivially with all of our armor. For coin! I am your master now! Although, note, one of our giants did almost die. Presum <laughs> presumably, this giant chose to tank all of the arrows. A curious decision. Uh, so, do we want to press up the blue line here? I mean... Yeah, probably, right? Bonus movement range, we can grab lightning strike. Attribute demonic. Has physical resistance, does not rout, is immune to terror. Okay. Ah, she dis disincorporates when her, um... Greater killing ability. When her morale gets low, when her leadership drops. That's interesting. Uh, let's get to that arcane conduit. I think I like Infernal Gateway more than I like Firestorm. They're both fun. And then you are continuing to become deadly, but yeah, we probably don't need to push your, um, your melee attack up any further. I guess we should grab something here. Okay. Earn 60 kills in battle to get your Hellblade. That's pretty cool. Uh, ward save plus spell resist for the whole army. I, you know... I like... I like this. Even in the situations where we're not getting the Hellblade, it's still 10% weapon damage on a very impressive base amount of weapon damage. Alright, fall back here to try to heal that giant more effectively, because apparently... Apparently that giant is not great at combat strategy. Who would have thought? And yeah, you can do something annoying. Can't assault these units, though. Oh, right. Did I? Yes. We, we killed somebody last turn, so our uh, action success chance is all screwed up. Well, we'll just run around to here. For the just in case, um, you know, just in case armies come over the uh, the wall here, I don't think I don't think this guy's gonna be able to reach us. They can probably get Steelbeard and Fierskir over the uh, over the mountain range though, or under it rather. We are seeing a lot of very basic kind of low tier troops in this army though. I mean, you know, Slayers are always dangerous, but I'm not too worried about crossbows. Yeah. We might not have much trouble with them, to be perfectly honest with you. Don't think we want any... Um, any outposts in any places where we don't have them. Are the Skaven coming in behind to um, to clean up here at all? Or... Mount Gunbad's still empty. I guess the answer is kind of yes, but they're, they're pushed all the way back to Fallen King Mountain. It's going to take them a lot of time to backfill. I just don't want this stuff falling to dwarves again as soon as I'm out of it. I don't know. Might be wishful thinking. There may be no avoiding that. So at this point, if we do end up... My, my guess is that the dwarves, the Karaza Karak, either confederated the... Dwarven faction that lives down in the mountains in the uh, in the Kemri Desert area, or they confederated the dwarf faction that lives all the way in the far southwest corner of the map on the other continent. Because I know that there are there are dwarves in those places. Okay, they just fell back to gather up. That's reasonable, or at least it's going to look reasonable until they remember that we have lightning strike and we can pick off their armies outside the gates. We might be able to do it twice, even. I don't remember if... I, th I think Talson and Krom both have it. Um, but, in any case, 
we probably will want to get there by just sailing rather than than trying to um even if it's the one that's kind of like on the landmass that we are on now it's just gonna be a lot of walking and also i don't want to have to trek through that many enemies we're going to be getting attacked from all sides the whole time we're doing it because you know the wages of being chaos all right they saw through all of my ambushes which is a real shame also, Bellacor's ambush somehow. Show me that. Um, okay, I don't care about that. We got our sensuous gifts, which sadly has reduced our corn authority. Malefax. Do I want to devote you to Tsinch? Or to Slanesh? Well, you know, we just picked up a Tsinch caster. Devote to Slanesh, remain lore of shadows is interesting. You know what? Let's do that. Such tantalizing gifts. I do like I do like the lore of shadows. So you are now faster, and you have some increased physical resistance. You're more functional as a sort of like a uh, like a gish kind of character. Enables soporific musk attacks. Win a win a battle with a unit of fiends of Slanesh in your army. I. I mean, we can make that happen. We could we could ally with or we could we could take the appropriate gift, right? You have my favor. Oh no, don't not the hero, the whole army. What are you doing? Attack. Don't just go look. The damn wings of the dragon keep, like, flaring. Why are you not able to attack this? Apparently, I was not... We didn't have enough movement to go from here to there. All right. Well, I guess we'll just wait then. All right. What did those dwarf armies do? Okay. They're moving... Northeast. Not a hundred percent clear on what their plan might be. Destroy. But also, the dwarves just totally abandoned this Pyrrhic victory. All right, hold on a second. Yes. We're gonna bring the other army in, but I'm disappointed in that. Chaos incarnate. I do not think I want to, like, I don't want to Destroy manually play this out. I guess we will if it's not going to give me a... Okay, there we go. We will if it's going to give me a bad enough result to justify it, but... I shall this would not be a very interesting battle. It's a lot of, like, a lot of crummy, easy, easily killed enemy units. The fort okay, so Abelacor will be back to, back to normal na next round, and I mean... Burning down Migdal von Galbarak is probably the move. Kandum can't turn around and attack us because you can't um, you can't attack straight out of. Master. Um. I wonder if these stack. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit it. Um, you can't attack straight out of that movement mode anyway. So all he could do is come up here and then get murdered. Yeah, I think Antero's just gonna speed up and move toward the other settlement. Let's try to wipe this faction out as quickly as we can. Uh, out of curiosity, are the elves, like... Okay, they're definitely not at war with the dwarves. I don't think I care enough to check whether they're, like, friendly. Because I don't think it matters. The only thing that really mattered was whether or not we might be able to get them to attack each other. Um... Sure. It is mine now. We'll go pick up the Nurgle gift as well. All right. So, who here has lightning strike? Okay, Krom does. Urkathal definitely doesn't. Oh, Talson also doesn't. Right, Talson had a lot of other things to spend points on. Okay, so... Krom's army is looking pretty healthy. We can probably have Krom. We can have Krom's army try to pick off one of these armies that's standing outside the settlement. No. No. 
Ooh, Thorgrim's army is not good. Bunch of basic dwarf warriors and quarrelers and stuff. Am I able to reach him this turn? It looks like yes. It's going to be a complicated situation with, like, where it leaves the other enemies, though. Because they are, um... I'll be sort of, like, running past them, right? I'm not sure what will happen. Right, I'm going to try to knock out this dude. Okay, hooray, you've done the only thing you could do to weaken that uh, that army. Much appreciated to weaken any of these three armies. Maybe it makes more sense to knock out one of the closer uh, armies. None of the others are going to go down quite as easily. This one's got a bunch of giant slayers and stuff. Does Krom's army have... He only has the one cannon. Yeah, I really do want it to be Thorgrim. All right. Let's see if it'll... Let's see if we can get that hooked up. So yeah, as a lightning strike vi victory, this should be, I think, relatively easily. Relatively easy? Yeah, okay, they're all grayed out. The real trick here is they have cannon. Uh, they have gyrocopters, but we have three units of Doom Knights, which should knock a gyrocopter out very easily. They have five units of archers, who are mostly not very impressive, but in terms of raw numbers, that is... That is 300 archers. So, you know, they're going to wear down... <laughs> they're going to wear down those Doom Knight shields at some point. Uh, we're going to be able to get a lot of value out of the Hell Cannon, though. 420 range to 440 for the cannon. So we will not be able to outrange them at all. The Warp Fire Throwers have to get much closer than the archers do. They're, they're relatively armored. Uh, let's put some bonus move speed on somebody who's going to be relevant for Archer Disruption. Probably trolls. Yeah, I like that. And then let's do this manually, I think, because I would like to do better than casualties medium if possible. Which kind of caster is Krom? Okay, Krom is a death caster. Yeah, I like that. So, this is Thorgrim's army. Uh, these dwarves are going to be exceedingly difficult to get to surrender. We are, we are going to have to kill almost everybody here. That said, I think we probably can do it. Oh, I should have upgraded these uh, the Chaos Warriors to Chosen. That's right, We that's, a, that's an option we have now. So we definitely want to try to use the Doom Knights to scatter their archers a little bit. What, what I want to do is get a unit of Doom Knights in on that cannon crew. And if the best we can do is keep their archers busy running around while the very fast Doom Knights lead them on a wild goose chase so that our Hell Cannon can fire into them, that's something, you know, that'll be functional as a plan. Um, also worth remembering, the Hell Cannon shots arc pretty significantly, but normal cannons, they don't, they don't have to fire, like, completely in straight lines, but they prefer to have a direct line. So we can definitely take advantage of the terrain a little bit here. Right, you're like, well, range is making that more difficult than I would like. I think this is going to have to do. Uh, so, I don't really want to be down in the valley. My God's call. We can have a lot of our Chaos Warriors sort of, like, shelter up here. I want the Warp Fire Throwers in behind them, actually. We have a lot of flying units in this army. We have to be very careful with them, because archers are a real threat. Trees is covered from cannons. Okay. So first things first, let's fire the power stone. Get that power dripping in as quickly as we can. Warp fire warp fire throwers take up positions in the trees. 
Knights take up positions behind them. So that as the dwarves approach the trees, the first thing that happens is they, they are met with a wall of flame. Is that a real plan? I don't know. Might work. Who can say? All right. All y'all do all that stuff. You, I guess, can just kind of, yeah, fire wherever. Here's your, bu here's your buff. Go nuts. And we have kind of too many flyers for me to be able to... Um, to command them all at once, unfortunately. Here's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna call you group one. We're gonna call the Doom Knights group two. I'm just gonna fan out for the moment. If you insist. And I'm going to manually try to maneuver Krom into a position where we can drop some some devastating magics. Now, keep in mind, dwarves do have some magic damage resistance. However, the purple sun still it deals a lot of fucking damage. And if you could just drop it sort of like in the middle of the enemy group and then watch it wander, you can often get some pretty good, pretty good killing out. Let's just do it. Let's just get them now. The The archers are not in position. And by the time the archers have done very much damage to us, I'm hoping we can just be out of there. And the archers on this side. Yeah, I might I might try to knock out the gyros right now. That gyro bomber is not particularly adept at air-to-air um, -air combat anyway. Oh, right. I forgot we have a bound penumbra, uh, pendulum cast. This is not a bad time for it. It's they're grouped up pretty tightly. This will help buy a moment for the uh, for the flyers to eat the gyrocopters. All right, don't get don't get drawn in too much. Okay, we we didn't really take much damage on that, like, failed attempt. Shields ate most of it. Uh, hell cannons are doing fine work. I want so badly to shoot Dragon Breath at the ranged, but I don't think it's a good idea for me to approach to that degree. cannon is perhaps not not picking the best targets. Maybe give it a little bit of direction here. Also make sure I put it in guard mode so it doesn't chase. Also, I guess we can we can reboom. What fire thrower? Our tail's yours. Hmm, have they separated enough that we should just go in? Maybe actually. Let me um, let me spawn my first unit of Furies. And at this point, I'm thinking the Doom Knights might... We could definitely have the Doom Knights drop the Gyrocopters, for sure. I might have the Trolls and stuff just fall back, like fall, like fall back toward these woods. I was kind of hoping we'd be able to do a to, to draw the enemies forward in a different way here. The question is, do we want to surge on the gyrocopters or do we want to run over and try to knock out these ranged units that have that have like been left exposed? I think we are going to just have our fight over here. 
There's that unit of giant slayers. That gi those giant slayers would be pretty good against these units. But I think... I think we can just engage in a, in a direct forward assault here. And yeah, it's just about time to start shooting, I guess. Spawn your furies as well. Okay, Fury's in on the range to make it very difficult for them to participate in the battle in a meaningful way. We can hit the cannons with one of the groups of Furies. The dwarves are going to try to catch us. Sorry, I know I pause a lot during battle, but you know, it's a lot. Battles are a lot. So let's have our champions run out to here. We want to run around... Actually... Yeah, you guys run to like there. I'm actually just gonna have the trolls hit this this advancing front in the side. We can probably break this down pretty quickly. This does run the risk of getting us um getting us caught by dwarf warriors running in, but they're not known for their speed. 28 versus no, we should be we should be cool. We should get clear. All right, uh, spells, potentially. Okay. <laughs> There's that wave of fire. Engage from melee real quick because we have a pretty good opportunity for this. The unit of trolls did get caught by a bunch of enemies who are less than half the speed of the unit of trolls. Which feels like shenanigans, but all right. Uh, now, Thorgrim Grudgebearer has a billion combat stats of every kind and is basically going to be immune to melee damage. So we do want to be cautious about leaving our troops in with him if we don't absolutely have to. Let's see if I can't get these Chaos Warriors. Um, oh. Are we losing in direct combat with archers? Chaos Furies, I'm telling you. All right, Manticore, solve this problem. I don't know what the hell's going on here, but fix it. And it looks like the aspiring champions are maybe, um... Let's have our exalted hero turn around and attack there. Uh, this is a pretty good place to drop a huge melee uh, debuff. Also, you're about to do some charging. I can't help but notice that our hero has taken like a weird amount of damage already, despite having been in combat for approximately three seconds. Oh, you, okay. Guys, 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 guys. <laughs> Please don't spray fire all over the Manticore. That is not ideal strats. This game got no, uh, they got no respect for life. This is a problem. They're used to everyone in their army being expendable. <laughs> okay, so the Aspiring Champions and the Trolls have just sort of scythed through these units. Let's have the Aspiring Champions continue on there. The Trolls can knock this out pretty quickly. How's all this going? Pretty well. Those Giant Slayers did turn around and they are doing the thing that I knew they were going to do. Swap you to this target. The giant is doing none damage. That's fun. Chaos warriors. Garnet steers us. Slay every mortal. 
for the Chaos Gods. And it's true, it probably is about time to slay every mortal. Okay, nice shooting from the Hell Cannon. Okay, y'all don't have to fight King Ironbeard. It's fine, really. It's, <laughs> please go find something else to do. You're not getting anything accomplished. Uh, so my plan is to just shoot him with 1,000 ranged uh, bullets. Just to completely ignore everything else. Uh, completely ignore the concept of doing melee damage to him because it is absurd. Uh, so two of the units of Doom Knights are breaking and running. I think we can probably disengage the third as well. I really do want to finish off the gyros before we reallocate this guy. All right, melee troops are in enough, and this is the part where we start using magic again. So here we go. Does this... This affects a pretty large area. Can I get... It's so hard to see the um, the bounds of the circle on the snow. I'm trying to figure out, like, where's the place where I get the largest number of things that actually matter? This isn't bad. If I overcast it, it makes it longer. Yeah, that's probably worthwhile. Right, that's a pretty serious debuff. And then at this point, I think... Once that casting has happened, I think we just descend on the Iron Drakes and kill their flamethrower troops in melee. Like, I know he's a wizard, but he's a chaos wizard. All right, we're seeing some surrenders. Uh, was this a bad idea? Maybe. Can't, no, can't help but notice you guys have stopped doing everything in a place where the enemies can still hit you. Maybe not the wisest plan in the world. Uh, kinda wide, I kind of want to ride back in. I'm not sure if the Giant Slayers will have the wherewithal to turn around. Definitely going to start focusing directly on their Lord. What I wanted to do was sort of like break the army down around him. And then he's not very fast, and we just, we avoid melee, and we, um... Hey, you could probably turn around, too. we we'll probably turn around and get back over here. We avoid melee, we just kite him with our, uh, with what little ranged we have, flamethrowers and stuff. Of back in, friends, we're doing it. Annihilate them! For the dark gods! See if we can disengage our giant from the giant slayers. Sorcerer Lord. Wow, those uh, pink horrors really didn't last very long at all, did they? Our tail's yours. Skizzle and leap. Okay, the giant slayers are uh, perhaps unsurprisingly fully obsessed with the giant. I what happened to? I had more units over here, I thought. All of our summons, everything's just gone. Are you able to Chaos Fury again? You are. This might be a good time for it. actually finish them off. The Chaos Fairies have this. Y'all gotta disengage. Do not... Do not hug the king. Please avoid the king. 
All right, the aspiring champions have done their work. Yeah, it is about time, I think, for burning Thorgrim to the ground. Uh, so you lot need to just get the hell out of there. Stay in and finish off these warriors on this front. Uh, okay, this is going to be resolved real soon then. Okay. And the hell cannon's out of ammunition. Which I guess is, uh, you know, this is a fine time for it. Uh, what are these trolls going to do? I don't know. I guess just stay on those units and finish them. And you... Yeah, you really can, like, just barely see the edges of the, uh... There we go, King... King Thorgrim all of a sudden ain't feeling so good. Wow, that broke him real fast. I guess I really underestimated the amount of leadership damage the flamethrowers do. It makes sense. But I'm just, I'm so used to dwarf units being, um, completely unstoppable. All right, yep, yeah, y'all have run out of ammunition. That's fine. Giant's dead, I think. I think we just fully lost our giant. I mean, that's, you know, whatever. We can get a new giant. Um, and those giant slayers are really fucking up our hero with, like, remarkable quickness. I know he's a large unit and everything, but even so, that's a lot faster than I was expecting. The aspiring champions, I'll handle them. Let's get a couple of you to run down this way and hit them from the other side at least. And come down here and abuna them as well. Let's just like try to get this over with. I don't think they're... I don't think they're long for this world, no matter what. Yeah, you tell him, Buna? Or... I guess Buna's not the, not the entity of the spell. This is a bad spell that happened to Buna. I don't know where the name comes from. Okay, did we outperform the auto-resolver? Probably. Would I have lost my giant to the auto resolver? Also, probably. Given what we saw happen to that giant in that other battle that we won trivially. Um, I'm still not happy about it. But getting rid of Thorgrim Grudgebearer in a real, like a manual battle, is a is a good thing to do. Uh, the AI, the auto resolver, definitely gives a pretty significant bonus to legendary lords, um, which is a thing that we have witnessed you know, many times on our own side. Uh, Bellicor being able to just tear through stuff. So this, this was important, I think. And now, even though this army is not in great shape, things aren't that bad, honestly. Like the, um, the flamethrower units are considerably less torn up than I was expecting them to be, given the... Um, Uh, given the state of their health bars in the battle. You gotta remember, the battle is representing the cumulative health of each body in the unit, while this, the health bar on the strategy map, just represents the proportion of the bodies that are still alive in the unit. Because at the beginning of each battle, each body is at full health. So we didn't lose very many uh, Skaven, but many of our Skaven became slightly damaged in the fighting okay and now that that's done we can uh we can engage in a tremendously unfair battle here we'll have Talson lead hmm. can i not get 
Uh, see the way they're um, the way they're positioned. It actually is going to be tough to get all three of us in on one of them. I foresee destruction. Chaos demands. Okay, they give us a Pyrrhic victory here. Yeah, we can't. The armies are spaced just enough that I can't quite get in behind them uh, close enough to have Krom uh, show up to this battle. And we could attack the other army and get Krom as reinforcements, but then we don't get Urkathal. And Urkathal's army is in considerably, considerably better shape. At this point, we can just take the auto-resolve because there are no other uh, enemy armies here ready to punish us. The Helm of Many Eyes. Wow. That's a lot of melee defense. I guess it makes sense. Does anyone have the movement? Yes, you do. Alright, we can we can set up a uh, a siege position here, start building towers. And then worry about actually murdering them uh, next turn. You need a boost. Now they will see true power. We shall weave the fate. Okay, you're going to. The gods smile. All right, out of curiosity, right now, with all three units in, in range, we would get a decisive victory, and without even losing anybody, it looks like. When we mouse over, nothing's, nothing's red. Yeah, well, shit, let's just take it then. Okay. We are not going to ascend to demonhood just yet. A bunch of kind of unimpressive magic items. Eternal blasphemy. Uh, sure. Yes. <laughs> okay, so. I believe. <clears throat> how about our. How bad is the shape my units are in? It's pretty rough. I don't think none of these dwarven armies are, are close enough or large enough to be a threat. We got chaos, proper chaos warriors following in our wake, and they definitely have designs on the enemies nearby. Okay, I have hope. I have hope. Do we have? We do. We do have our um, Cursor's Boon up, right? Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and Cursor's Boon for sure beautiful. That is a beautiful position for that. Okay, just in case. Let's get that cooldown ticking. Uh, so I believe now we are at six of seven on our, that's not the button, on our big objective list of dwarf holds, right? Or no, no, five of seven, probably. Because we did lose the one, yeah, 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 we did lose the one that's all the way to the west. Uh, we can send an army to recover that, though. Chaos. I think Malefex needs another turn of sitting still in in our home territory here, though. Let's talk about this island. Oh, you didn't actually run away. Well, that was unwise. You should definitely have actually left. I don't know what you were thinking. A beautiful decision. And this is Sigvald's last couple of skill points, which we are going to put into Doomfire. Excellent. I thought it was pretty good too. Thanks, man. Uh Okay, you were you were leveling up before I had reinstalled the DLC though, so you probably can't actually benefit. For God's smile. Witness my beauty. Okay, did the Camry army just leave? No. <laughs> no, they did not have the wherewithal to just go away. They decided to make landfall. Valkia the bloody. Well, that's stupid. That's By just like black, really will. That's really bad planning. This army is better. Spill blood for corn. But as you can tell from the way I said that, I don't think it's very much better. Uh, so what they have is they have a fair number of Ushabti here, which are very large and impressive, um, like, obsidian statue soldiers. They rule, and some of them have giant bows. 
Uh, but they also have a bunch of crappy chariots that I just don't think are very good against our heavily armored composition. We don't have any like soft archer core for them to go hunting. They do have tomb guards. Tomb guard are more functional as melee units. But like Violence decisive victory casualties low, right? I am your master now. I appreciate the help. Kagan Blood Reaper got his disc. Khan That's is cool. Awakened. And then we're gonna send Valkia through the warp. And I think we're gonna send her west. We're gonna we're gonna move toward the um Greater killing ability. Toward the situation. So Finish Infernal Gateway, grab Earthing. We have a lot of winds of magic in our armies from a lot of our sort of map upgrades. I'm not so concerned about the Sweet. personal Sweet winds of magic murder. upgrade. Definitely do want to max out training, though. Het woman. Right. Can this army get through the gate? Yes, but we have to go into march mode. Must not cease. I was kind of hoping not to have to do that. Let me make sure that I'm not warping myself into a terrible position here. Uh, nope. Things are pretty, pretty safe. So it's going to be Valkia's job. Valkia and Sigvald together, probably. Oh. Hi, Ragush the Heart Render. A goat man who is fully on his own out here. I mean, whatever. It's fine. I don't care enough to, to detour to kill you. Uh, Karan Godslayer doesn't really get to do anything this turn because the dwarves didn't come after us at all. Uh, I think I'm going to start running for over here. So, if we can, hold on to the dwarf holds we have right now, plus grab Karak Norn, get, get Bellicor back to Karak Norn, plus um, reclaim the Spire in the west. We can fulfill the um, the tradition, the tradition, the conditions of the ultimate campaign victory, and hopefully just get this checked off permanently, and then we can go back to fighting, you know, um, humans or whatever. All right, I know our garrison lord did not move. That's intentional. There is a path to glory available. Ah, yes, right. Arkathal is not. Yeah. Thank you. But we are not doing that yet. So let's see how the dwarves of this area respond to our play. Unfortunately, it's probably going to be a few turns of running. I was really this um this Karaza Karak thing came together a lot faster than I was expecting it to. I thought we were going to be stuck playing footsies with the dwarves in the in the mountain pass for several turns. Now that we have this covered, I'm not really sure what I want to do, like, overall strategy-wise. Is it worth it for us to go knock out Clan Angrund, maybe? Our lives would be a lot easier if Clan Angrund didn't exist. Although that would certainly have been truer back when there was still a Skaven clan down there to claim all the land. You are here because I... Um, I just don't really see the point. Yeah, no, I'm good with our defensive alliance. We have 600,000 gold and just like nothing to do with it. Maybe I could drop that amount of money on one of the other chaos factions to assimilate them, but I'm not sure that it's, um, or to, to um, confederate with them, but I'm not sure that it's useful to do so, frankly. I kind of like having a bunch of armies that we do not have to worry about running around and just like making noise on the Empire's front. Once the Empire is down, maybe? Just have, if we had like one or two more Dark Fortresses, which is what we would get from the Confederation, we could be running another stack. Uh, okay. Miscast chance up for Talson's army for a couple of turns. That's not really a thing we have to worry about, I don't think. So much Angrund. So, so much Angrund. Interesting. 
They just didn't move at all. They spent a whole turn doing literally nothing. Demon Prince. Also, moving through mountain passes is so slow. Also, Intira, are you running around short units? We'd probably like a, like, I wouldn't mind a giant, but we are out of, there's no giants in our recruit pool, and we're not likely to find one soon. So maybe I just grab a unit of, like, trolls or dragon ogres? I guess trolls. Dragon ogres are a little bit more of, like, an anti-large troop. I mean, they have... They don't have the regeneration. They do have slightly better combat stats overall. They have that anti-large, of course. But once you put the armor on the trolls... Yeah, I think I would rather have trolls, honestly. In a situation like this, where I do not expect that I'm going to be in combat with, um... With anything large anytime soon, because dwarf armies don't really roll that way. Meaningless. The Dark Master. I will alone. Hmm. Vampires are being annoying. It's not a really like a great place for you to be right now, my dude. Blood for the blood god. Yeah, let's just go fuck these dudes up. Or not, you know, whatever. The first huh. Well. Do I think I'm gonna be able to get Carrick Norn back then? think so. Okay, it's a pretty bad garrison in addition to being pretty small. I do think Intiro can handle this together or er, handle this alone unless Lord of Torment. I am going to I am going to run Belicor out to here. Follow Ogus winds. There's no way we're going to get any friendship from these vampires. Yeah. I don't particularly want to go to war with them. If we did go to war with them, though... Are they're, they're not at war with any of the other Chaos factions at the moment. Oh no, they totally are. We could probably just carve through them, then. We have lots and lots of allies in the area. The Skaven are all the way down here. Um, the Skaven aren't at war with them yet, but they would be if we declared. Yeah, alright. It's a decision we're going to have to make in the next, like, turn or two. Uh, I do feel like we should warband these things up to Chosen. So you lose 15 bodies, but 17 weapon strength, melee attack and defense up, charge bonus up, and then also it's worth noting... They will be going down in level and gaining those stats, so once they level up again, their stats will be even higher. Yeah. Alright. Must remember to do these things. Can I replace my giant? Yes. Now that this is my territory, I can access my gifted units. Are we do, we, do we not have any, um, hmm. No hell cannons in the pool and no, all right, we're, we're going to get hell cannons next turn. All right, yeah, well, I do want to wait for the hell cannons before we go swapping that back out. I will, in fact, just take a replacement giant. That's fine. All right, we'll have to level that giant up, but we'll get there. You can't quite become Doom Knights. Yeah, I think we're... I think we're good here. Uh, when we warband you... So we can warband them back into Chaos Warriors. 
to become chosen of corn or, or whatever. At this point, though, we can mark them in any way we choose, really. And we're not, we're not, you know, we're, we're kind of like slowly de-specializing. Do we want to consider doing something else with them? I like the Frenzy an awful lot. Chaos Warriors are very tough. So increasing their damage output um, definitely feels meaningful. It's a shame there's no, like, there's no really good armor, armor piercing corn unit, though. I think I'm just going to leave them as they are for the moment. You two can definitely become chosen. You should be marked at the very least. Next rank, you can do that. Uh, these Forsaken could be marked as well. Probably should be. Forsaken already have Frenzy, though. So maybe they should be marked in a different way. Lose a little bit of speed and a little bit of melee attack, but gain poison. You know, a distributor of poison is not not meaningless. This gives them uh, the flanking skill. They lose 14 charge bonus, but gain the skill that doubles their charge bonus. That doesn't really seem <laughs> worth it. It's like lose 14 to gain 20 versus gaining poison. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna make them Nurgle troops actually. We're probably not going to turn them into spawn. I want them to maintain the armor for the moment. But yeah, poison distribution. Valuable. I think we're going to hang out for a turn. Like, everybody's in really rough shape. We kind of just need a minute. Yeah. Uh, so that's y'all. Malefex is... Malefex is better. Malefex is feeling better. Okay, you can't turn into better versions of these troops. You could turn into those troops. Do I want to develop some skull crushers, like some some like really hard ground pounding cavalry? What is this army about to be doing? Fighting vampires, probably. In which case, the doom knights are probably helpful because the vampires have flying units that are going to want to going to want to be able to control the battle and if we can get up there and hunt them down we don't have to worry about it so much yeah because we may we may well end up at war with these vampires I want I want to attack the settlement so badly there we go I hate rotating the camera because it really bothers me when I like I can't quite get it back to the way it... Is this right? This is like approximately right. Agreed. But they made me. They forced my hand. Y'all saw it. Okay, you don't get to do any fun devotion. So... A glorifying act. More points for the Vanguard. More points for fun spell casting. Spread ruin on them. And I guess give it the biggest garrison you can just to make it annoying to attack. Alright, so one, two, three, four, five. Dracula Spire is a place we're headed. Carrick Norn is a place we're headed. But it is going to take a little while. Yeah, what we like knock out Eshin. And then we could just sweep through Vampire Land. I don't really want to I don't really want to fight these vampires, if I'm being honest. It doesn't feel like the most useful thing to be doing. Okay, maybe we're not going anywhere just yet. I'm going to set up an ambush on the coast. Moving, father. 
My adoring hordes agree. What level is the chosen upgrade at? Seven. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to stick to the plan here. Alright, so y'all get upgraded shortly after. Sigvald's not very good at ambushes. Sword maiden of the blood god. Ah, here's the real the real threat posed by that faction. I use the phrase real threat very loosely. There will always be blood. Well, we're planning to go around here, so yeah, I'm not I am not necessarily afraid of getting attacked by this army. They have a bunch of scary giants. And those are a real threat, but they also have a lot of Ungor Raiders, which may as well not exist against my army. So, something tells me we'll be fine. Never be a barrier to war. Vakia, shut up. <laughs> She's very chatty. They're all very chatty. Uh, yeah, go out here and just fuck with stuff for XP. Hooray, we did it. We can we can research things we don't need even faster now. So Thorgrim is in full retreat. If we click on this, is it going to take me to Thorgrim or is it going to take me to... No, okay. It is telling us very clearly this is their territory. So we got to cut through a swath of this nonsense to get down there. Pretty not that pleased with it. Six more settlements. Iron Brows Expedition has 28. Yeah, and this is not a problem where we can, like, sail around to get to it. This we actually are going to have to go through. Alright, well, periodic portal drops and continuing to chase on turns when we have, um... Turns when we have a little bit more HP to work with. I have to say, I really was surprised that they just they just kind of like fell back and yielded the the space to us. They didn't try to like set up forward or group their armies effectively. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. Let's um let's let's see about building a thing in their territory. Just to have a second Skaven ally again so that we can pull in even more somewhat exciting rat weapon teams. Certainly not the ones we were hoping for, but I mean, if we... Okay. The vampires are a detour. However, if we do go to war with the vampires, with the Fecundites and uh, Azazel's people also at war with them, and the three of us having so much, like, overlap in that area, I can't imagine they survive very long. Right? There's no way. I really do like we gotta we gotta try to seal up this um this dwarf this seven dwarf hold victory uh, objective quickly though because there's no way I'm gonna be able to hold on to Karaza Karak. All right, would you believe people are seeing through my ambushes? I mean, I guess we got the portal down. We don't necessarily have to hold on to it. Oh, okay, I am going to be able to run past. I thought we weren't going to be able to get around Gristle Valley, which was part of my, what was calcu what was uh, affecting my calculations on declaring war here. If I'm allowed to just pass them, then that's fine. Oh, we were not even in March mode. Do not stop into darkness. Do not stop into darkness. Wise words. My Lord, since I 
Uh, we might spend another turn or two here just playing defense while we try to put together our dwarf holds. With power. That said, I think this is the last turn that Talson's inside the settlement. We'll, we'll trade Urkathal in after this to benefit from the healing. Okay, cool. I have no time for this. And Tiro, do you have... No, of course you don't have Lightning Strike. Okay, well, if Intero had Lightning Strike, this is the easiest, uh, the easiest kill ever. What is unthinkable? I'm a rude lord, not some smith. Ready? Go now. Chaos is all. Okay, we're just gonna full reverse here. Oh, uh, sorry. Talson is doing what Talson's doing. I do think we burn Eshen out just so that I don't have to leave a defender here. I mean, obviously, people are willing to cross the entire world to attack a poorly defended settlement that they, like, literally cannot know about. So maybe the idea that will be safer for me killing Eshin is a fantasy in the first place. I have like 50% move left. There we go. Go into encampment stance. Oh, apparently I can move quite a bit further. All right, so we're ready to attack Zelig next turn. We gotta we gotta heal up while walking. We got places to be. Okay, Marathi turned around. We're gonna come back to you, Sigvald. For murder. Where did the beastmen go? Oh, they're probably still around here, just in ambush mode. How bad would an ambush be? Honestly, I don't think it would be that bad. On the war path. We're just gonna run. I really wish I could afford to lay down a um, a portal over there. Alright, just pick on people. So Talson is where Talson needs to be. Crom is where Crom needs to be. Alright. It does not feel to me like, Sigvald is needed here anymore. It also doesn't feel to me like Valkia is going to need backup. So I'm wondering, does Sigvald go to Karaza Karak? Does Sigvald go to Nuln to try to rush down and provide support for... Yeah, you know what? That's probably the safer thing to do, right? The gods direct me. Huh, Grunberg was burned. Altorf has fallen. Okay, you know what? We may not even have to do anything. The Empire may just uh, may get devoured by our allies while we are paying attention to other things, which would be pretty okay. You are going to run out of places to put skill points well before you run out of skill points. Interesting. Where are all my allies? Can I get a little fucking support back here? You took Fallen King Mountain back. I guess y'all are doing something of value, though. They are, like, harassing Imric and whatnot. Yeah, alright. I just don't want this stuff to get resettled. It's a pain in the ass to keep it all clear. Oh, right. Hold on. I did want to outpost. Uh, let's go to Clan Eshin. Skaven, here we go. Sneak, sneak. So yeah, your territory is mostly pretty far to the east in positions where I am not going to be able to take advantage of you at all. But that said, we can still get some benefit.
I guess it doesn't like super matter. I wish it was a little bit more obvious from the um from the symbols here. I wish they, they made it clearer. Like this this settlement has a lot of stuff, this settlement does not. So having to click on anything to everything to figure out where the cool units are is a little bit of a bummer. Oh yeah, they are like they are deep, deep, deep in uh Cathay. Okay. I guess this is how Cathay went down. Uh, you know, this'll do. Do they have the flamethrower troops here? Oh, they actually don't. Nor do they have globe throwers. I kind of want something that has the death runners. Death runners have a um have an armor sundering debuff that they put on people. If I'm remembering correctly. So it would be cool to be able to um to recruit those. We might actually use those to sort of open the way. But I don't think they have a settlement that had that plus all the other stuff I want. Yeah, all right. We'll just build the outpost here and then, you know, we'll upgrade it. We certainly have the money. And that's like in the middle of their territory. It's going to be very difficult for uh, that to be disrupted. Now that I've said that, of course, you know, you know what's going to happen. Uh, let's keep an eye over here. All right, not sure why this needed my attention. Stay in the shadows. We Are we at war? No, you're who? Okay, you're friends with Clan Eshin. Some dark elves are just fine with me, apparently. It's a war with every dwarf in the universe, so... Sure. Uh, actually, counteroffer. Pals? And obviously, you, you could be giving me more money than that. Yeah, interesting. Okay, well... There, another person to build a, uh, to build an outpost with. What do the dark elves have that we would want? They have some cool monsters. Oh, they have, uh, they probably have dragon access. We don't have a lot of dragons naturally. I'm trying to think. I don't know the dark elf forces super well. They have a bunch of ranged troops, but they're all like crossbows. I would definitely take some guns. I don't... I don't particularly feel the need. Okay, yes, absolutely enter the war on side of ally. We were thinking about declaring war there anyway. Now everybody on that continent is at war with Sylvania, so I can't imagine they're going to survive for very long. And we can probably blow through that pretty quickly using... The two armies that are protecting the dwarf holds right now. Plus. No, probably not plus anything, honestly. Okay. The Karakurn army is taking Karakurn back. Or just sacking it, I guess, despite the fact that there is nothing of value in that settlement. I mean, if they took it back, we would just kill them inside of it, right? So I guess that wouldn't be good either. But, like, after sacking it, it doesn't look like they ran very far. I think we're going to be able to catch them. Oh, no. Not a Skaven Undercity below... Mm, this text is wrong. Below this settlement. I'm very fine with that. The, Sk the Skaven can bother the dwarves all they want. Uh, let's go ahead and set this. We're not going to do another whole turn. Sure. It is mine now. Uh, but there are a couple of things I want to get done before we stop for the day. So first of all, uh, this situation, they are really building up a very, very large number of units here. Which is not my favorite thing in the universe. Um, also, this is happening. Belagar Ironhammer has joined this group of assholes. Dark princeling. Oh, and Tiro's not going to be able to reach him in normal mode. Okay, that's fine. Uh, as soon as as soon as war was declared, all of a sudden another full stack appears right here. That's fun. 
Um, but the other thing I definitely wanted to make sure I did was actually build the outpost with the, the Dark Elves, because I will forget to do it. Okay, outposts. What kind of cool stuff do you have? You have a lot of settlements that don't have anything interesting. Chariots pulled by dinosaurs. A war hydra. You know, that's cool. That's something. Okay, here we go. This is like a recruitment center. Uh, yeah. Black dragon. Bunch of weird cavalry stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The place where we can recruit the dragon is good enough for me. Hell, I will fully replace all of the giants in my armies with dragons if they will let me. <laughs> okay, I think that, maybe, is where we are actually calling it for today. Situations, you know? Um, now we're at war with the entire vampire nation, which is going to be like a whole thing. There are so many dwarves bearing down on me from every direction. Sigvald needs to get over here as quickly as possible. That is my plan with Sigvald. Uh, Bellicor is going to go settle Carrick Norn and then turn around and start chomping vampires if possible. Yeah, it's going to it's going to continue to be a complicated situation. Uh, so that's what we're going to call it for today. And thank you all so much for watching. When you come back next time tomorrow, a complicated situation. It's still mostly dwarf problems, but not entirely. And there's just so, so much killing left to do. And we'll see you then.